Hi everyone, my name is Nova, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about navigating through the 3D graphics window. In my SDK scenario, I have one ground object, which is the Grand Canyon. But before we even dive down to the ground, I want to talk to us a little bit about moving through the GUI and just getting a feel and a handle for moving around. So I'm going to pull up this page here, which gives you some like, it's like the cheat sheet for moving around the 3D graphics window. So while I go through this, I'll talk to you guys about what buttons I'm clicking on so you guys understand. But we'll go through, rotate our view, zoom in and out, uh, zoom in on some place on the ground, pan around, and then also just reset the view so we're all in a standard perspective. All right, so with my mouse, <laughs> I am going to rotate my view with my left mouse button. So this is just me rotating the view and spinning around the globe. And if you're curious, if you actually look at the bottom of your 3D graphics window, you'll see that it says Earth Inertial Access, and that tells you what reference frame you're in. So you can go ahead and just toss the globe around and have fun with it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in and out. So zooming in with my scroll wheel will take me closer to the surface of the Earth, and zooming out will get me lost in space. So as you can see, I have like a little marker for the moon, and I am going past the moon. And that little bright point of light, that's the sun. So now I'm essentially lost in space. But don't worry, if you ever get lost in space, the way to sort of reset yourself and get situated again is to hit the home view button at the top of your 3D graphics window. And then you'll be back at a standard perspective of the Earth. Now, the other way to move around is if you use your like right mouse button, that also will zoom you in and out, and it just does it a little bit faster. So now I'm hitting the home view again. Now, next we're going to dive in and take a look at the ground, but let me just quickly pull up this cheat sheet again just to review that left mouse button lets us rotate. We can zoom in and out with our scroll wheel and right mouse button. Uh, we'll do the zoom in on a region in just a little bit in the pan, but knowing this reset view or this home view button is going to be super, super important when you're trying to understand where you are in space in your scenario. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top of the 3D graphics window and hit that little magnifying glass button that says zoom in. And I'm going to just draw a box around some place on the surface of my globe. So drawing a box. And now, if you take a look at the bottom of your 3D graphics window, it no longer says Earth inertial axis. It now is just blank. And that's because I'm now on the surface of my globe. So if I want to rotate and move around, I'm no longer just like spinning the globe. I'm rotating my view. And I can view my scenario, my globe, whatever I have on the side. Next, if I wanted to change this view, so now I'm sort of, if you like imagine some point in the middle of your screen, that's essentially what I'm rotating around. So now when I rotate, it's some fictitious point that I'm rotating around. But if I want to change that and move in onto a different area, what I'm going to do is take my left mouse button and click on my keyboard, the shift button, and then use my left mouse button to pan around in my view. And of course, I can still like take my finger off, still rotate it, do anything like that. But just to change my focus, I'm going to put my finger on the shift button and use my left mouse button to zoom in on a certain area. So that's how you pan around in SDK. The other thing you can do is you can jump to an object in your scenario to zoom to it. In my scenario, I have a marker for the Grand Canyon. So I'm going to right click on it and click zoom to. So now I have zoomed to my Grand Canyon. And I'm looking at it from overhead. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mouse, my left mouse button, and I'm going to click at the bottom of the window and drag my screen up till I'm seeing it essentially from the horizon. And then I can see that I have a little marker on the ground telling me that that is the marker location for my Grand Canyon. I can still rotate the view as well. So using my left mouse button, I'm just going to click on the left and drag my mouse over to the right and just view it all the way around. Now this part here isn't nearly exciting. So why don't we use our scroll wheel zoom out a little bit, and then just take in that magnificent view. 
So in my screen over here, I'm seeing the Grand Canyon. This is loading in from the SDK Terrain server. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my left hand, I'm going to click the shift button and actually just pan over to the Grand Canyon to change my focus to someplace else on my screen. And then I can zoom to it if I want to see it a little bit better. And I can still do the thing where I draw a box around a certain region. So if I click the zoom in button and I draw a box, say, maybe by some of these plateaus, I'm now looking at it from overhead. So if I wanted to, I could just get, you know, a zoomed out perspective of it and then tilt my screen just to see it on the side and just see the magnificence of the Grand Canyon. So I hope that was a good introduction to panning around in the 3D graphics display. We're now going to take it up to space. So let's bring in a satellite object and then play around with some of the 3D navigation from there. I'm going to hit my home view button to reset my view and I'm just going to bring in a satellite into my scenario. In my scenario, you can now see that I have a orbit for my satellite. I'm going to zoom to my satellite just by right clicking on it and hitting zoom to. And just to quickly go over the stuff that we did before, I'm going to use my scroll wheel to zoom in and out. I'll use my left mouse button to uh, rotate my view. And what I'm going to do next is a little fancy. I am going to open up the view to and from option. So up at the top of your 3D graphics window, there's an icon of an eye and a little arrow. And from that list, I'm going to select a view from slash to, which gives you a lot of flexibility. So instead of always jumping to an object in your scenario or viewing just the earth or anything else, you get to play around with looking at it across a vector or just, you know, different reference frames. So over here, it says the reference frame. This is for my satellite ICR axes. If I wanted to, I could go to the Earth inertial axes if I wanted. What I want to show is that we're currently constrained along the positive Z vector, but we have something called unconstrained rotation. So we're going to go a little crazy. I'm going to enable this and keep the show trackball option enabled. And what you'll see now is this circle around my object. I can also change the color. This is a quick aside. Changing the color of my satellite in orbit so you can tell the difference. OK, so now I'm looking at this pink ball around my satellite. So what exactly does that mean? If I use my left mouse button and I click inside this circle, you know, it's the same sort of panning, rotating around that I'm familiar with. But if I click outside of it, I'm now going to be rotating it. So we're in space, we can turn ourselves upside down. And you can go all sort of crazy ways. So this way, you're essentially just rotating your different view, and then you can also rotate it in another dimension. To show you what that looks like when you're looking at the Earth, I'm going to go back to my home view. Once again, do that unconstrained rotation. So now you can see this big pink line, or circle around it. So clicking outside of it will let me rotate the view. So now looking at the Earth upside down. Technically, you're up in space, and is there really an upside down? Whatever. Um, but then when I click inside, I can also rotate it like this as well. And then once again, you can click that home view button, and that'll take you back to your standard perspective above the globe.